their expert that they spoke to, a real expert here, said if you plan to park at the airport, take the least desirable vehicle in your garage. <laughs> It says, leave the luxury wheels at home. Quote, obviously a nicer vehicle is going to be a higher profile target, he said. So if you have two options of cars, take the one that doesn't look as nice. <laughs> this segment is brought to you by Eastside Weight Loss Clinic. I'm down 37 pounds on the program and I lost most of that weight in just two months. There's no prepackaged meals, no counting calories, no drugs or injections. Schedule your free 15 minute consultation today at eastsideweightlossclinic.com. I already told you guys this whole wire service thing. You know how it works by now. You could have an article that winds up in the Seattle Times, but it's actually from like the Washington Post or something. And the Seattle Times decides they're, they're gonna pick it up and, and, and run with it. Now they could decide not to. So that's why I don't let the Seattle Times off the hook. It's not as easy as just, oh, it populates on their website and, and it just is what it is. We can't do anything about it. Yes, you can. I worked in a news agency. You can absolutely remove an Associated Press story or we could when you don't want one. You don't have to take a story from the New York Times to the Washington Post. So uh, there was a story in the Seattle Times, the headline, airport parking thefts and prices are up. Should you still park? <laughs> okay. So this was originated in the um, Washington Post, was published in the Seattle Times. I thought it was interesting because it started by talking to this uh, congresswoman from Colorado, a Democrat, and saying, oh, she flies frequently for her job as a congresswoman. For ease and efficiency, parking at her home airport in Denver would make the most sense. However, her family warmed her against the idea. My parents would say, well, just, uh, we'll just drive you to the airport. Don't leave your car there. So here you have a Democrat in Congress. And crime is so bad in her district that her parents tell her don't drive and park at the airport, which I thought was a really interesting because there also wasn't any sort of um, revelation on her part that it might be Democratic policies that are contributing to it. So I just thought that was a funny way to start it. But the whole gist of this, the whole, honestly, the whole gist of this article is if you don't want your car stolen, just don't drive. <laughs> It's not like, hey, let's get to the bottom of this really difficult issue and why car thefts are through the roof and crime is through the roof, etc. Nah, if you don't want your car stolen, the very best thing to do is just either don't have one <laughs> or don't, don't drive it. Don't park it somewhere like the airport where you're going to have to leave it for an extended period of time. It's just government at its best. Let's not solve the problem. Let's not solve the crime crisis. Let's just tell people what they should do to not be victimized. And look, I am perfectly fine with giving people tips not to be victimized, but if you're not as the government also working on the back end to try to make sure that people are victimizing them less, then you are absolutely failing. Uh, I would also note that this article, probably one of the reasons the Seattle Times wanted it up on their page as well, is it mentioned some of the airports that are dealing with this more significantly and shock of the century. It also had a quote in here from Perry Cooper, who's a senior relations manager at SeaTac Airport. He noted that car-related crimes are a national problem. See, that's what I love too. Oh, it's not just us, it's national. So, you know, trying to distance yourself from the crisis uh, and not unique to airport parking facilities. Okay, can't, can't, can't make it sound like it's a Seattle problem, can't make it sound like it's a SeaTac problem. He went on to say only a sliver of the airport's roughly 1.7 million annual customers are victims. Quote, we have seen an uptick in the last few years. However, it's still a very small percentage of overall usage. Over 99.9% .9 of parkers get through with no trouble. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny to me. And I like that's that's important to know. It, of course, it's not happening to you know half the the travelers who go park at SeaTac. I'm not saying that I don't want to know that information, but if you are the traveler that it happens to that really, really sucks. You get home from your spring break with your kids and your car's gone from the SeaTac parking lot or the parking garage, like that really sucks. And so it always bothers me when anyone in government uses crime data as a way to kind of suggest that it, people shouldn't be as bothered by it as they are. Because it's enough of a problem that, you know, you're right, it's, there's an article being written about it. You're giving advice for, for people on how to avoid their car getting stolen in an airport. So to me, it just is really tone deaf when people in government positions are like, yeah, but it probably won't happen to you. Chances are it probably won't. Now, Nicole, before I get to this next one, because I don't think you've read this yet, right? I did not. Do you want to guess, do you want to offer me a guess on okay. the reason they say that car thefts at airports are up. Come on, Nicole, you got this. Come on, what are they blaming it on? 
Tried and true. Trump or abortion? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's the other thing uh, they blame everything on? Every societal problem in the last three years. Uh, uh, Come on, Nicole. Like geo- I, I mean. COVID. Oh, COVID. <laughs> Oh my of course, gosh. COVID. Yeah, I've moved on Crime, from COVID. Every, well, we, most <laughs> rational people have. Right. Uh, but yeah, any sort of crime issue, any sort of society, homelessness, drug mm-hmm, abuse, mm-hmm. whatever it is, uh, stores that have closed down, right. stores that are boat boarded up in downtown yeah. Seattle. COVID. Yeah, man, COVID. Nobody yeah, shops COVID. anymore yeah. because of COVID. <laughs> uh, let's see. So there was a couple. They, these lines just made me laugh because again, it's the advice the dumb advice about rather than talking about let's get to the root of the problem just how people can avoid having their car stolen and then of course the the uh suggestion that this has to do with the pandemic still in 2024 before you head for the airport run your own risk analysis and let the results determine whether you pack up the wagon or ask a car share driver or your parents for a lift <laughs> like that's the last thing i want to do before i go on vacation i gotta do a um the Seattle Times and the Washington Post say I have to do a risk analysis on whether I should <laughs> hire a cab or a rideshare driver and uh, before I take my car. It says vehicle thefts are up. The return of air travel after the peak of the pandemic increased the demand for parking spots. The bounty of un- untended cars has sparked a crime wave in airport <laughs> parking sites. Think of how dumb that sounds. So you've got, what, you know, 5,000 cars there as opposed to 3,000 cars Look, if they want to steal a car, they don't care if there are 5,000 cars in the parking lot or 3,000. They're not stealing 5,000 cars. They're going to go and steal one. So this, it, it, it makes no sense. This is my favorite, favorite part. Ready for it? Mm-hmm. Their expert that they spoke to, real expert here, said, if you plan to park at the airport, take the least desirable vehicle in your garage. <laughs> It says, leave the luxury wheels at home. Quote, obviously a nicer vehicle is going to be a higher profile target, he said. So if you have two options of cars, take the one that doesn't look as nice. <laughs> Which actually is, is completely wrongheaded. And I don't even know where they get these experts because, as you guys will know, newer cars are harder to steal. Well, and the, but the more expensive brands are not the Kia and Hyundai. Right, exactly. So you have Kia and Hyundai, first and foremost, they have some issues that are very widely mm-hmm. known that would make them easier to steal. And so that's why they're stolen so much. But the newer cars, the ability to steal newer vehicles and vehicles that also have um, you know, technology like OnStar and stuff equipped and GPS tracking, the newer, nicer luxury cars are not the ones that are being stolen. That's just not, not only is that crazy advice to say, oh, take the car that's less valuable just in case it gets stolen. It's insane advice and shows you have no idea when it comes to what kind of cars are being stolen and why. Uh, and and, and no, no business, obviously, in a news article. But, you know, they're piecing. So you steal a car, right, to commit a cr- another crime to piece it apart, you know, maybe sell some parts of it. You're not stealing a car for a joyride and you're not stealing a car to keep. Now, if you were stealing a car for a joyride or you're gonna keep it and pretend that it's your car, yeah, you'd probably try to steal a nice car, right? If you're a teenager, oh, I wanna steal a fast car. And you've got the Porsche and then, you know, some uh, 1998 Honda. You're (laughs) You're gonna steal the Porsche, but that's not why people are stealing cars. So it's just, honestly, it's so laughable and it speaks to so many of the issues with the media. It's this whole, it's so frustrating to me because it's like the Seattle Times ignored quite a bit the issue with the police pursuit law. The whole debate over police pursuits for two years, if you look at the number of articles the Seattle Times did, don't consider the editorial board. If you look at the, the actual reporting that the Seattle Times did on the police pursuit issue, the rise in stolen vehicles, it was really, really sparse. So they ignore this crime crisis as it absolutely ramps up. They ignore all the underlying issues. They ignore all the policy failures in Olympia that have led to it here in Washington state. But then they're gonna go all in and publish this really, really long article that just says, hey, if you don't want your car stolen, just leave it in the garage. And this is the this is the media and they wonder why people don't read or subscribe to the Seattle Times anymore. It's insane.